Hello, podcast listeners. First up, thank you so much for listening to and supporting the podcast. We really, really appreciate it. We love doing it and we love getting the amazing comments in from all of you. Just a quick reminder that the Your Success book is out now on Amazon.co.uk and Amazon.com. It's currently available in both paperback and Kindle and the audio book will be coming out in 2019. Head to tiny.cc forward slash your book to check it out. That's T-I-N-Y dot C-C forward slash your book to check it out. Now on with the podcast. Welcome to Your Success Podcast. We give you actionable insights and stories behind real life success wherever you go. Here are your hosts, Angelos and Mo. Your Success Podcast is proudly sponsored by Your Tax Partners, specialists in helping business owners and property investors to understand the wide range of tax issues that impact on their income, gains, and overall wealth. Now, let's get into the show. Welcome to Your Success Podcast. I'm Mo. And I'm Angelos. You are. And today uh, we have the second of a two-part series on a day in the life of. So we've just recorded a day in the life of uh, Mo, H. Mo, and now we're talking about a day in the life of Angelos. Um, and a lot of people ask me, you know, what, what does Angelos actually do? You know, I have to ask myself sometimes. So... Let's start from uh, the beginning in terms of, well, what do you do, Anglos? That's a really good question, Mo. Thanks. Um, I guess on a day-to-day basis, it's so many different weird and wonderful things. Yeah. Um, I keep a daily journal, and sometimes yeah. I look back at what I've been up to, and I was like, bloody hell, that's really quite an interesting day. Yeah. So most days um, involve something to do with the property um, portfolio, whether yep. that is managing a, a problem or whether it's expanding or managing a refurb. So at the moment, I'm buying um, many blocks of flats, and each one of those blocks of flats has its own drama. So whether it's a problem with the sellers or expectations or tenants or the condition or the surveyors or the mortgage yep. or conveyancing, all of these things need to be managed. So you need to wear many hats when you deal with property, as you know. Mm -hmm. Um, You need to know a little bit about tax, a little bit about law, a little bit about the the structure of the property, tenants, and all these weird and wonderful things. So a lot of what I do is reading and learning and speaking with people who are experts in their fields, paying them, or um, and just learning, really. So there's that from the property side of things. And then um, there's a the sourcing aspect. Yep. So you got it's all very well having your properties that you're buying at the moment, but you've got to have more in the pipeline to hit certain targets. So it's looking at every single property that comes on right move and then going and booking viewings and building those relationships with the state agents. Then you also have to manage your investors because they're the most important people in the world as far as I'm concerned, making sure they have a good experience with you, managing expectations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that can involve whining and dining, but some people are very matter of fact. So it depends on the the, um, the individual. The one thing I'll say about property is that it's all about people. Yeah, people right throughout. So whether it's the, the services that you use, the legal, or the mortgage, or whatever it is, um, as well as the individual people, your customers, your tenants, treating them the best you can and making sure you, you give them the best property possible. So that's out on the property side of things. Yeah. Then I also run a, an events business called the Professional Investment Group, or aka PIG, mm-hmm. and um, we meet once a month in Plymouth and in Truro, in Devon and Cornwall, and we talk about um, the latest property news, the latest investment news, business news, and we have star speakers that come and talk about a specialist oh, yeah. subject. We star have, speakers, you say? Yeah, I think we had a guy called Murat Haikir or, or something, H. Mo, yeah. um, last week talking yeah. about um, his I great... Bet, I bet he was good. He was bloody good. Was and yeah. his hair was oh, shining, yeah. it was brushed, it was awesome. So is that a lot of work to actually pipeline the speakers and get them booked in and things like that? Yeah, it, it does take a lot of time. Yeah. You have to, again, it's down to relationships. It's about talking with people, thinking about what, what speakers could we have next month or six months or whatever it is that will align with first of all the values and making sure that members get the most out of those speakers but also just looking at the news and seeing what is being forecast making sure that we're ahead of the game yeah. um, as entrepreneurs you should always be looking at today but also what's coming in the in next year or five years etc etc so um, it does take a lot of time uh, so Plymouth at the moment we've booked speakers right until February 2020 um, and each one of those talks is different, 
and you have to work with the individual um, speakers to make sure that what they present is absolutely the best they possibly yeah. can. So next month, um, we're doing a, a mock court case. So it's very easy for me to ask a solicitor, for example, to stand there and talk about Section 8, Section 21, how to evict a tenant, if that's their specialism. Mm -hmm. But why not talk about a court case where we have this really bad tenant um, and we have a judge and we have an expert eviction specialist who we, we will create this role play. Bring it to life. Exactly, because yeah. then you learn, but also you're entertained as well. Edutainment. Edutainment, yeah. and that's really, really important. That's what we try and do on your success podcast. Well, we, we try our best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it, a lot of that is um, low-level stuff as well. Yeah. So, you know, scheduling the marketing, yeah. the um, automating that as well, in, um, engaging with the Facebook groups, um, talking to individual people, inviting them along, working with um, the hotels that host us yeah. as well. So a lot of it is quite routine stuff, which I'm looking to maybe outsource some of it to free up more of my time. So what's your highest value things, do you think, in terms of PIG that you should be spending the most time on? I think the most important thing is spreading the word about yeah. the events business, because I feel that we have a very high quality product. Um, but the, the biggest strength and the biggest weakness of PIG is myself. Mm. So I am, I guess, the face of PIG. Um, I may need to lose a bit of, um, or put on a bit of weight in fact to be an actual pig. But the point is, is that you can do everything, right? I've always thought of you as the face of pig. Thank you, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the thing is, is that you can do everything yeah. yourself, but you're never going to do everything perfectly. And there are people who are a lot um, more qualified, a lot, have a better skill set when it comes yeah. to marketing and advertising. So that's one area that I feel that. I can employ um, people who can really promote and expand um, the, the reach of pig yeah. at the moment. So yeah, um, really excited to do that, but it does take a lot of time. And then there's a the podcast, which yeah. I absolutely love doing because it's something that um, I'm really passionate about, inspiring other people and then interviewing amazing people. Um, but that, again, takes a lot of time scheduling and reaching out to people who have very busy lives. You know, these are top business people, yeah. whether it's in the UK or abroad. Then there's talking with sponsors and things like that. So there's a lot of low-level stuff. But you and I, I think from day one, you certainly encourage having a, a team in place so yeah. that we don't have to deal with the editing of the, the episodes, the video editing, the transcribing, the social media stuff. All of that is part of the pig, sorry, the uh, Your Success team. Yeah which allows us to do the high value stuff, which is really, really important to do. But moving forward, um, I'm outsourcing a lot of my bookkeeping at the yeah. moment, um, because as I expand, there's more and more finance stuff that needs to be done. So going back to your question about what is my highest value yeah. things that I should be doing, um, sourcing projects and raising finance and managing my refurb team. So it's a team that I've built up over the past four or five years. They're really, really good people. Um, everyone knows the standard that we work to and we have a good um, good time doing it. It's an enjoyable process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I had to learn to let go of the micromanaging. I had to learn to stop um, installing bloody skirting and doors yeah, and yeah. doing all the low-level stuff that I should be paying someone to do when my primary role within my own co company, I guess, is to go out and find the project, speak with the estate agents and raise finance yeah. And, and build that pipeline as opposed to being on site and doing it. Because if you're doing, if you're on site and you're on the tools or whatever, you, there's no future pipeline of work, right? Because you've not spent the time investing in the sourcing and in the investors and, and, the, and the deals and stuff. So. Yeah, and like I said, you have to wear many hats mm. in this game. You really do. Um, and sometimes it's best to identify some of the weaker areas and outsource mm. that. Um, so that's what I'm doing at the moment, trying to systemize a lot of the work, outsource some of the stuff that could be dealt with a lot better yeah. with professional people. So it's really important. So when you start off, you probably won't have all that knowledge and experience, but as you grow your business, it's really important to start delegating out. And, and like we said before, you, you to a certain extent, you don't have to do everything, but to a certain extent, you have to do some things to... Um, understand how they're done so you can then outsource them sufficiently and you can manage KPIs and manage people that are doing the stuff and things like that. Right? Yeah, I mean, if you start um, outsourcing straight away, for example, the builders, right? Yeah. Um, if they said to me, yes, we need to put X, Y, and Z in, if I don't know what X, Y, and Z are really well, they may not be completely honest or they may be exaggerating for greater financial gain. You need to have that experience in order to manage them. Yeah. It's really important to do that. 
Um, what about just Star Trek? You spend any time on that? Oh, just Star Trek.com. <laughs> um, so I'm sure a lot of our listeners may have picked up over the many um, podcasts that we release. Yeah. I'm a massive fan of Star Trek. Um, absolutely fanatical about it. I love it. I love the fact that it shows a greater future than what we're living yeah. in, uh, where we accept people for who they are. And, you know, we've advanced beyond wanting money all the time. We, we, we go out there to learn things. Yeah. And that really resonates with me ever since a young boy. So I, I've created this um, Star Trek YouTube channel and Twitter feed. And every day I talk a little bit about Star Trek and what I love about it, yeah. what, what could be improved. What do you love about it? I love the fact that it's got this great optimistic future mm. for us, in theory. Mm. And I also love the fact that back in 50 odd years ago in the 60s, Gene Roddenberry, the person who created it, um, developed, well, created these ideas of future technology so, and ideas. So, first of all, um, a small device that you can hold in your hand where you can talk to other people. In the 60s, that was unheard of, and now it's just common for us. Mm. Um, medical tricorder, so you can scan someone wirelessly and pick up a lot of their conditions. Well, that is almost here now. So all these things that he um, thought about are coming true. And I, th I think that's absolutely brilliant. But it's also inspired a lot of other people as well. So astronauts, um, yeah. um, a lot of people in the 60s especially, they, especially if you're black, didn't have a great future, for example. They, they weren't well represented on, on television and film. And yet we have this black lady on, on the bridge of the Enterprise you know, with a great rank and respect. Yeah. And that was well ahead of its time. And you had this multinational crew, Japanese, Russian, at the peak of the Cold War. Scottish. Scottish, indeed, who was actually played by an American. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, James yeah. Doohan. Um, he served in World War II. And if you, here's a little bit of trivia for you, Mo, because I know you love yeah, Star yeah, Trek yeah. as much as I do. <laughs> um, he lost one of his fingers in, in fighting in World War II. And um, wow. you can sometimes catch it that he's missing a, a digit on film. Anyway, I digress. So when was that film then? That was between 1966 and 1969. So how old, how old was he, like 40-something at the time? Uh, he must have been late 30s, early 40s, yeah. Because he was very young in World War II yeah. at the time. Yeah. That's mad. It's just brilliant, isn't it? And it's, it's continued for 50-plus years yeah, yeah, yeah. and inspired so many people. What do you think of the new, um, the new series? That's quite contentious. Is it? Um, <laughs> I actually have picked up quite a few haters. Have you? Like really venomous haters. It means you're making an impact there. Right? Indeed. Um, you're never going to please everyone, right? And I have my opinions and they're no more valid or less valid than anyone else's. Yeah. But um, I'm not a big fan of the, the latest series simply, um. <laughs> simply because I feel the writers are appealing to the lowest common denominator. Yeah. Star Trek's about high quality um, morality plays in space. Whereas now we just have this soap, like soap opera Hollyoaks yeah, like level. It's, yeah. That's not what Star Trek is. Yeah. Star Trek is about inspiring people and showing people there's a better future than, than what we have at the moment. Um, it could be argued that we are, we are experiencing quite dark times with various um, things going on um, across the world. And Star Trek should rise above that. Yeah. Star Trek should show us a, a better future. Um, which I feel that it's not doing at the moment. Do you think at, at some point it's going to come true? I feel that a lot of the things that Star Trek yeah. has predicted has arrived maybe three, four hundred years earlier. Um, really? Which, which is great. So when, just, what year is it set? Um, so, wait, well, so, according to the different <laughs> series, um, right. without going into the details, it's set about two, three hundred years in the future. Right. But if you look two, three hundred years ago where we were, um, to get to Australia would take a year and then mm. to get back a year, and yet we can pick up our phone and, and just call over Skype and there's maybe, what, uh, like a 0.25 mm. delay in the, in the signal. I mean, that's amazing progress. And it, it's, it's, it's almost exponential. Imp it's almost impossible it? yeah. to predict what's going to happen yeah, in the next yeah. two, three hundred years. But I think most importantly, what Gene Roddenberry set out is that there's a future where we all accept everyone for who they are. Mm. And there's, you know, there's no limitations on what the human race can achieve in collaboration with other races absolutely around and, the universe. And, you, and you create this coalition of acceptance and you all oh, coalition <laughs> interesting choice of words um, so yeah I mean a federation okay yeah, a federation yeah, yeah. a federation of different um, things and that's just a metaphor for how we we should be with our different nationalities yeah. of the different countries yeah. we should be very accepting of it and we should work together as a global society rather than 
being competitive or and also like accept people that like maybe Vulcans that are sort of very analytical and not very emotional like accept that that's what they're good at and like Spock and take that and then accept that um, McCoy is is passionate you know, emotional yeah, yeah. but not that analytical and then and just to take the best parts from each each thing. But I think we need to take time to be aware of ourselves, to yeah. be aware of others. Uh, right now, I feel that society is very quick to judge, mm -hmm. um, very knee-jerk reactions, and unfortunately, I, I see it getting worse, mm -hmm. especially in America, where it's either it's very binary. You're either mm -hmm. black or white, yeah. uh, not racially or anything like that. But I'm talking about decisions that yeah, are being yeah, made, yeah. and I feel that sometimes it's the grey area yeah. that we all live in. And so that's where you have the debate, and actually, you can the grey area is where you can change what your opinion is of something or whatever. Yeah, so you need to have that debate. So good. The, the, these kind of discussions yeah, I right. have on a, uh, every day with fellow fans. So yeah. Um, okay, so uh, so that's just Star Trek, and then the final thing, which isn't last but is very high priority, is um, a new addition that you spend time indeed looking after little Alexander. Yep, um, blonde hair, blue eyed. Like his dad. Like his dad. <laughs> Still waiting for the DNA test. <laughs> yeah, he he's just How awesome. How is he now? He's three months old. He's wearing six oh. months old clothes. Is he? He's quite. A, uh, he's going to be tall. Like his dad. Like his. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, man. I mean, sometimes, as you know, yeah. in a day, it can be a real roller coaster yeah, of emotions. Yeah. You could be one step forward, five steps backward, yeah. and by the end of the day, who knows where you're going to yeah. be, right? But then I take a few moments and look at how he's doing, and you, you make a funny little noise, and his whole face lights up. Oh, that's and just your voice. That's just yeah. my, my, my funny voice. <laughs> and, it, and you forget everything. It changes you. It changes yeah, everything, yeah. and it puts it into context, even yeah. if you're dealing with absolute idiots, which yeah. sometimes you are. Yeah. Um, just looking at his little face yeah. and holding him makes the world of difference. So anyone out there who, you know, the old cliche, babies change your life, they really, really genuinely yeah. do. And I feel that my life has been changed so, so much in the past three, three months. No, it's good. They're, they're absolutely phenomenal. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to, to that day. It's, I think it's hard to know what it's going to be like. Um, but yeah, it's very exciting. I've definitely seen a change in your like outlook on things as well. And I think yeah, since he's come along before, I was I was driven, but now I'm really yeah, yeah, yeah. you know I'm very Super focused to focused, yeah. to get to where I want to, and I want to get there relatively quickly. Slow, yeah. slow and steady wins the race. I mm -hmm. accept that, but it's really sharp in my resolve, and I am determined to get there in the next few years. And the most important thing I'm working so hard to do is buy back time. Yeah. So I have my portfolios. I can then. That will all be systemized with minimal input from myself. I can focus on what makes me happy, and that's yeah. the creative stuff, such as Your Success Podcast, writing future books together, all these cool things, yeah, yeah, yeah. public speaking around the world, that'd be great to go on yeah. tour together, and inspiring people. But also, the most important thing, spending time with my wife and uh, Alexander and future babies. Who yeah. knows what's going to happen? That's the most important thing in life. Nothing else matters. Mm -hmm. Yes, money will come and go, but it's the time. That's yeah, the most important thing. And spend quality time. And I'm very fortunate in the fact that I can spend time with Alexander. As he grows, I don't need to ask a boss or some other person for permission yeah, yeah, yeah. to do that. And that's, that's why I work so hard to achieve. That's good. That's really good. So if people want to get in contact with you to talk about PIG, to talk about property, to talk about systemizing, talk about your success, just Star Trek or being a father... What's the best way for people to um, So you can find me on Facebook, on yeah. Anglo Sanders, or Instagram, or Twitter. Um, check out yoursuccesspodcast.com. Just startrek.com. Just startrek.com. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty much everywhere. So yeah, please reach out. I'd love to hear from you. Cool. Well, thank you for listening and watching uh, this episode of Your Success Podcast. Uh, please get in touch either on some of the uh, ways that Anglos has mentioned or via hello at yoursuccesspodcast.com. Uh, we might have mentioned it once or twice, but we do have an Amazon number one best-selling book out uh, called Your Success. And you can go to tiny.cc forward slash your book to check it out and grab a copy. Can I just say, Mo, very quickly? Cool. Um, so the number one best-selling book you're referring to yeah. is called Your Success. Yeah. And it's a book about how to be successful yeah. uh, and that we've both written. And what amazes me is that there are copies of our book in Peru. Yeah. And it and Nepal, yeah, 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 and I think um, and it, the Caribbean and, and yeah, in America, and South America, as well, all over the yeah, all over yeah, yeah. the world. And I, I never would have thought when we sat down to write this book that it would have achieved a global um, 
global reach, yeah. I guess we can call it. And I'm really, really proud of what we've done. And some of the feedback that we've had has been really phenomenal from high class working yeah. professional people being inspired by what we've written. So yeah, really pleased. And, and people that have actually downloaded the Your Success Toolkit, which is free as part of the book, and actually gone through the actions in that and, and implemented uh, things that have actually changed their life, which is which is really, really cool. So yeah, it's really, really good to good to see it spread out um, around the world. So, and you get so thank you for listening to Your week. Success Podcast. So I've yeah, been absolutely. And thank you for listening and we'll at see home. You I've been Anglos and I've been Mo. And see you again on the next exciting podcast. episode. Your Success Podcast is proudly sponsored by Your Tax Partners. If you're in business or an active property investor, talk to them to better understand your tax affairs and your options. If that's you, there is a special offer waiting for you at tiny.cc forward slash success pod. That's tiny.cc forward slash success pod. You have been listening to Your Success Podcast. Click subscribe for more incredible content. More details can be found at www.yoursuccesspodcast.com.